Hey guys, Nicole Virgil here. Today I'm talking to Illinois State Rep Karina Villa, an ardent supporter of our legislation and people's right to grow food on their own property. In this discussion, we cover some of the benefits that growing food has had for some of the local youth in her district, as well as how the upcoming legislation is going to both simultaneously respect local zoning regulations, as well as protect the rights of Illinois homeowners to provide for themselves. Since you're here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified when I upload my next videos. All right, here we go. Thank you so much for having me today, Representative Via. I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with me. Um, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started. Sure. So um, I was a school social worker for 15 years before deciding to run for office. Uh, it was absolutely my passion. I absolutely loved working with my students and miss them every single day. Uh -huh. um, so that that's what I did for, for a while. Um, I did get involved locally with politics by running for school board. Um, so I was on the board of education for uh, a few years before um, deciding to run for state representative. Um, it wasn't in my long-term planning by any means. Um, if you would have asked me when I was in my 20s, um, you know, do you want to be state representative one day? I, I, the answer would have been no. Um, basically, uh, I decided to run for office when I saw um, just the negative impact on the families that I was working with, um, with what was happening in the state of Illinois. There was a budget um, impasse that really um, hurt our families uh, with, with being able to access mental health services and, and such. So. I see. Um, yeah, I said I'm gonna stop complaining and try to be part of the solution. And here I am. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. very interesting. Okay, so let's jump right into our Hoop House bill. Yes. Um, I know you are a supporter um, of the last bill and you're interested in supporting going forward. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us why you're interested in supporting this bill? Absolutely. Um, my parents uh, come from Mexico and they are farmers at heart and, oh, yeah. and they farm in Mexico as well. Um, it's something that I've kind of grown up with um, my whole life and uh, I, I just really believe that people should be able to grow their, their own food. Um, the health benefits, um, the cost effectiveness, the reduction in our carbon footprint, all of these things are really important uh, to me. Yeah. Um, so the city of Elmhurst says that it's their jurisdiction and they can prohibit or allow uh, these these issues on their own. So we have this tension then, or at least perceived tension between the municipal government and the state government. How do you feel about that? And can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah, I understand that there's um, different uh, things that govern um, that are you know for the state to get involved in and other things that are um, focused more at a local level. Um, I think that I am very passionate about people being able to grow their own food and have access um, to, to affordable food and to healthy food and so I will continue on this journey with you and with others like you who are um, wanting to do this for their families and for their for their uh, loved ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wasn't sure that it was the right tool, like I should work at my municipal level as best I could. And then when our municipal government came out with a flat out ban, so called, on these measures while allowing other residents to have them, I realized that growing food is a right on one's own property. And then I thought of our federal and state constitutions that they protect rights. So the state does have the power right. to protect rights. Mm -hmm. And if we believe that people have the right to sustain themselves, and in this climate, sustaining yourself requires crop protection because it's cold, right. <laughs> then that's how I kind of thought about the state versus municipal role. Does that? 
yeah, work I mean, with you, or how yeah, do you think about that? And I did have, a, you know, you and I had a lengthy conversation, and you kind of told me about um, your journey on all of this, um, and and step by step what you what you had gone through, and. Um, I know that you don't live in my district, but I would hope that if someone lived in my district who wanted to do something like this, that they would have the protections to be able to um, grow f grow food for their for their families. Right. Right. Um, right. So it's that's it's really an important topic. And, the and it just having watched um, Representative Maurice West's interview that he did with you and talking about that heartbreak of the food deserts, right. um, that's just, it, it's unbelievable, right? That right. Um, people in our state are unable to access food and this would be a way for people to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the mayors and managers organizations and the IML and you represent a district that has municipal governments in it. Do you have any concern about pushback from people in your own district? Yeah, I think that as a state rep, it's um, really important to me to be able to listen to everyone and to hear concerns from all sides and angles. And right now I have a very open dialogue with um, my mayors. I haven't heard any of them reach out to say, hey, we don't want hoop houses. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, uh, we, we definitely have um, an, an open rapport. And like I say to okay. any of the groups that approach me, whether it's the mayors or whether it's church groups about an issue that they're interested in or, mm -hmm. you know, educators, I have six different advisory committees, one of them being my environment advisory committee. Mm -hmm. um, people come to me and, and bring me different suggestions and some of the ideas I agree with and other ideas I don't think are best for my district so mm -hmm. I don't ever give a blanket promise of you mm -hmm. know you, you're coming to me with this opinion and so I will absolutely jump on that opinion I will be more than happy to listen to to people and um, adjust things in a way that's what we do in Springfield all of the time we sure. work across the aisle and we work um, we collaborate with each other in fact I think your bill was initially carried by um, one of my colleagues in the house from across the aisle mm -hmm. um, so I think that legislation that that is bipartisan really really is important so just back to the original question of my local government um, it, you know if they should reach out to say Karina we're concerned I would be more than happy to listen and then help adjust the legislation with any of their feedback to make it a more amicable um, bill the language that you're expecting to have in the upcoming draft will protect the right of the homeowner or the landowner to cover their crops with hoop houses or whatever crop protection they need but it will have to be done within the context of local zoning ordinances, specifically maximum lot coverage, so you couldn't cover your whole lot with a hoop house or setbacks and whatnot. Is that something that you're comfortable with? Yeah, absolutely. And and yeah. with with legislation, that's you know what happens. You put out the first draft, you hear feedback from different groups, and you make changes, right? And I am very excited to um, jump on board with the legislation. I was on your last bill and ready to yeah. be on the next one too. We have a, a, a youth detention center here in King County. Uh, the grounds used to, at one point, be beautiful grounds. And the you know, what when they first built it, I think it was for parents to be able to drop off their children if they weren't able to care for them. And it has turned into now like a youth detention home. Um, but there was a little part in the tour where we were in this. Um, what is it called? Um, a greenhouse. Uh, and the boys in the greenhouse were telling me all about it. And they were showing me. They put putting their hands in the dirt. And you saw and, life, didn't you? I in their eyes. I saw so much life in their eyes. Yeah. With it. They were beaming with pride yeah. of what they were doing. I had the um, Farmers Bureau here yesterday, and I told them about about this, uh, about King County, about the, this home, and mm -hmm. I, 
I would encourage you maybe one day to come and go and visit them and you know talk to the kids there about it it's mm -hmm. it's unbelievable like how that one little thing mm -hmm. can really make a difference um, mm -hmm. for kids that they feel like they're part of something of creating something because mm -hmm. you never know then in, the, in their future when they're out then mm -hmm. maybe that will lead to some kind of job mm -hmm. for them to you know be contributing members of society mm -hmm. i love it thank you so much thank for your you. time